Hi, I'm Zoya Hussain, and on today's episode of Crew Cut, we are in conversation with makeup and hair designer Aisha Seth. Um, if you don't know who Aisha is, she is usually the most glamorous person on set, so you will be able to identify her very easily. Um, Aisha's career, man. like pageants ads films bridal you may know her from you know a little film called queen uh, most recently uh, unpaused sana we did something cool that's going to come out soon so yes. uh, aisha thank you for chatting with us thank you for having me yeah. <laughs> of course how did you even get into makeup or decide to you know come here and do this yeah it's a very strange story because uh, in school i wanted to be in advertising and uh, right after uni i actually joined an ad agency i joined uh, mccann erickson for oh, a year okay. and a half and i was doing copy and art over there and it was like literally being thrown from a boarding school and then a very protective environment into like this corporate world and it was so difficult uh, but i loved the you know the creative work that i was doing mm. but i think uh, the universe had different things planned for me um i gave that up uh, in like just overnight because i had a bad experience over there and i resigned the next day and then two days after that um i went for this interview for cabin crew i flew for four years and that was like i think the best part of my uh, you know uh, 20s and uh, i learned uh, to do makeup there because we always had to have makeup yeah. and no one taught us we just had to had to learn it and do it on ourselves on our flights and uh, also i have a painter's background so i paint i used to paint a lot and i used to work with oils and watercolors and i think my just innate sense of like uh, color used to help me just do my makeup really well so my friends used to come to me in school and in college and even after that even uh, when i used to fly that put my eyeliner what color lipstick do you think i should use my foundation not correct help me choose that it just started there but i had no uh, wish or desire to join the industry at all and then a friend of mine just like kind of over lunch just told me you know why don't you just start doing this for uh, you know uh, as uh, your career and i was like who's going to pay me for makeup and zoya it just started off like that i had a little kit and some neighbor wanted makeup so i went and did it and she was so happy with it and she wanted to pay me something i was like no no i can't take money from you because you know <laughs> you don't think of it you know, as a lot yeah. of people will pay you to do their makeup <laughs> yeah. okay now but 18 years back uh, i don't think so and i remember she gave me 500 rupees i still have that note I still have that note with me, and uh, it just you know kind of snowballed yeah. from there, okay. and here I am today. Where do you find your inspiration? What inspires you or excites you in general in life, and just kind of is creatively stimulating for you? You know, I think that I love creating value for people. I just, and it's not just for people; it's also for myself. It's mostly my kids. Okay, I love. I mean, they really like stimulate me because they're now uh, teenagers. Okay, and it's very interesting yeah. to be with them and spend time with them. I'm sure. <laughs> I get very excited to come back from my set, even especially when I'm traveling, mm. and I come back home to be with them. And of course, my work. So I also, I think you know, I bake. Yes. So during COVID, when I was not uh, doing makeup, I was like, okay, what is going to excite me on a daily basis? I need that uh, value creation in my life on a daily basis. So cooking started, baking started, and it gave me so much joy to see another person. eating my food and saying oh my god this is like the best carrot cake or this is the best chocolate cake or kids saying we only want aisha aunty's cake so it is not uh seeing my work on screen yeah. okay it is the process of it which is more exciting it is you know like that that is what is most enriching and uh, keeps me feeling alive which was your first like film project i would rather not talk about okay. it but no i will So it was this project uh, which was quite uh, traumatic for me. Okay. Uh uh it was my first film project where you know I was very excited because I was suddenly given the entire film and the looks of the actors to do and I had not done anything like that before. Mm-hmm. It was always like you know um for uh, a magazine or party makeup or a bridal. Mm-hmm. So that was uh, different because uh I was not excited about Bollywood. I was excited about doing and creating the looks for these characters and see seeing my work on screen after that. Right, that was the most exciting bit. Um, and uh, yeah, so I kind of learned many many life lessons over there. Mm-hmm. And uh, but the positive part of it, I think the only positive bit of it was that I created like a team. 
you know and i learned how to manage a team i think which is very important in this industry how it's not just your uh, i think your uh, the the your uh, talent it's also the way you handle people and your yeah. team is the most precious on set for you i want to know what your you know creative process is like so how do you read a script so i get very excited when uh, you know producer says i'm sending you the script it's like the most it's the highest point of my you know that that project right i'm getting the script with my name on it like you know they have aisha <laughs> yeah, said across amazing. the page it's so exciting but uh, yeah i i hate uh, reading it on my phone or my ipad i want a hard copy so i'm like please 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 give me a hard copy as soon as you can so once that comes into my hands I start reading it. In the beginning, it's a big blur because I have no idea what's happening. Okay, because they just give it to me, and I'm like, "What is this?" And you know, especially the Hindi bits which are written in English, I'm like, "Oh God!" Yeah. So then I have to read it a second time. Okay, when I read it the second time, I kind of understand the characters, and then I ask the director or the AD for a breakdown of the character and like, "What is the background?" Mm. And then visually, it starts coming alive in terms of makeup. It's always so. I never think of the clothes or. uh the character traits i'm always thinking of okay this is the background okay what can i do in terms of makeup uh is uh, you know if it's a hazif do i give her a bindi what is her mm. uh, her uh, religious belief or you know these little little things they really excite me so i start making my notes on the side that okay this is what i can do and i can bring this into the character uh maybe there's a tattoo that's required maybe it's a tattoo that needs to be covered because the tattoo is not going and they have a tattoo you know stuff like that uh even like the smallest thing like the eyebrows should it be filled in should it not be filled in and that is the most exciting for me for every character so the more characters i get to do you know i am just at it the whole day trying to figure out how i can you know make this character look a little bit more real because i love doing see glamour is very easy to me because i've worked a lot with glamour but i love doing realistic films you know mm-hmm. yeah of course i love the song and dance i love glamming up but it's just that how do i bring this because now movies are becoming very real you know right from yeah. like your bruise is 3 days old to she just got gotten, gotten up from bed does she need makeup does she need that lipstick and you read the script and you know you're doing this project and you kind of have an idea of what you would like to do with the characters or how you would like them to look how do you present it to the director and then what is that process like so they give me a list of characters first okay uh, of course after reading the script and by then i've understood the character so again a uh, great director will uh, sit with me on every character for example sudhanshu sarya mm-hmm. called me over to the office we had a good one hour meeting where he explained to me the main characters and where they're coming from so i like hearing the back story which is not there in the script because it helps me do the little bit of tweaking to the character in terms of makeup and hair mm-hmm. right um then i sit uh, you know on a presentation if the character is locked then i know that this is the face the features this is how the actor is looking mm-hmm. and now i have to convert it into this character so then i give references so i'll pull out references from you know the internet or uh, you know make my notes and i make like a presentation of the main characters mm-hmm. you know mail it then i get feedback saying that aisha this is working oh this is a good idea this is not working at all why is it not working mm-hmm. right and then i have to rework it so sometimes there's a back and forth on uh, many characters till i get it absolutely right and uh, of course there are some characters where you know it's plain and simple this is what i have to do so that then becomes the blueprint for all my uh, team that yeah. uh, this is what i need to do for this actor this is the name of the character right from foundation how i prep the skin to the different look so one character could have one look throughout the film or it could have like a graph mm-hmm. right so if it's a graph then i know that okay after so many uh, scenes the graph changes and then this is how the makeup and the hair has to change mm-hmm. right so that's how i uh, function i've done so many you know like shoots with glamour and the miss indias and the miss worlds and all that that now it's like exciting for me to maybe age somebody like totally mm-hmm. the opposite like de glam somebody you know put weight onto their face or lines frown lines um freckles pigmentation so i st- i have started doing a lot of research mm-hmm. on that but this is like a whole new world of makeup which i want to enter and which i'm on the brink of entering and uh, you know i love horror movies how do you collaborate with a director or convince them um, if you have different kind of visions for a character um or even convincing actors that have 
that are so, I mean, a lots of actors have this, you know, they see themselves in a particular way in their own head uh, or have imagined the character because an actor does live with a character for so long and, you know, try and give birth to it in a way. Um, how do you convince them, like, really, an actor that, or a director that's really stuck to what they kind of believe should be the way? So, before I sign the contract, I tell the producer that I will fight for my characters. So, if it's a character who is in a village and there's no electricity there, she cannot have tonged hair, right? Yeah. So, if the artist again is telling me that, oh, you know, my hair should have these beachy waves and I need it to look like smooth and blow dried, I'm like, no. I will tie your hair up at night and you will get up in the morning and come and I will work with that hair. I'm not going to put any product in it. I'll work around it. I'm not saying that I'm going to make you look like a, you know, a disheveled mess on screen. Mm. I'll work around it, but we'll have to compromise somewhere and you listen to me and I'll listen to you and yeah, the character should look alive and real. Mm. And then once you've kind of figured it out, you know, figured out what you want to do and what the director would like, what the actor is supposed to look like as this character, what does the collaboration with other departments look like? So I basically work more uh, closely with costume and of course the ADs because the scripts are all uh, given to me by them uh, the day, uh, the way the shoot goes uh, per day. So more with the costume than any other department. But I also keep in mind, of course, the lighting. If, uh, you know, it's going to be dark, is it a night shoot? Mm -hmm. What kind of feel the director wants to give? And a good director... Okay, will always come to me as the designer and say that, Aisha, this is how I need it to look. Yeah. So what do you say? Should we give it a found, give her foundation or give him foundation? Or should we give sweat or whatever? And then I have a clearer picture to work with, right? You know, collaborating with somebody where lighting is just so bare minimum. Yeah. My makeup also has to reflect that. Because if he's using like just like one lamp or like a few, you know, like uh, yeah. uh, little lights, I cannot use heavy makeup. So that's how I have to brief my team that I cannot have like under eyes covered. Let the dark circles show because there is going to be flicker. There is yeah. going to be like, you know, shadows on your face. It's a night scene. So don't go and uh, kind of dab or touch up. You know, before you begin shoot, how do you go on even putting your team together? So, you know, I am uh, very finicky about who I have on my team. There are many uh, factors which I take into consideration. One is, of course, talent. And I don't want amazing talent. I want uh, basic talent. You should be able to understand skin tones mm -hmm. and foundation. I uh, want a little bit of uh, fire to learn. I don't want my team to be like, oh, I know everything. Aap mujhe mat batao. Mm -hmm. You know, I need them to understand that we all have to learn from each other because even I learn from them. I've learned so much from my team, mm -hmm. right? Um, they have to have, uh, I mean, they have to be very hardworking mm -hmm. because this is a industry where, you know, our hours are so uh, irregular, you know, you could uh, be shooting for 16 hours and then have like a five hour turnover and again in the morning you're shooting. Mm -hmm. So uh, I like people who trust me and they know that I'll take care of them. So there'll be a few yeah. tough days, but uh, Aisha is there. You know, yeah. so I don't like them to complain because I, I've already understood that complaint before them. Mm -hmm. So that trust I need from their side. Um, and of course, uh, you know, that uh, they think of us as a team and it's not like, this is my character or I'm only doing hair. You know, I make it like I have a little mm -hmm. group discussion with them and I tell them that this is how the production is. This is what to expect from them, like the negatives and the positives. But I want to be this team, mm -hmm. right? So I'm ferociously protective of my team. Mm -hmm. uh, not just uh, that, you know, they get their per day or they get their money on time, their food is okay. I'm very uh, protective and ferocious about how they're treated on set. And I don't care about opening my mouth sometimes if I see that either my team member is being screamed at or yelled at or being treated badly. I will yeah. speak up because it's taught me all that. Yeah, this I can personally attest to. <laughs> yeah. But uh, how do you delegate to your team on set? So I have like a, a hair and makeup HOD, okay, who I have given the docket to that this is as per, you know, the scenes that is happening. This is the look of the character. And then I have like junior artists. So it all depends upon the budget, of course. Mm. And then I have at least two senior artists and I have the rest of the junior artists who are very good with their work. And, uh, you know, they are given, like, if there are lots of characters, each one can take care of three or mm. four characters in a scene. So that's how I delegate the work. That uh, Also, I want the makeup and hair to work in tandem because 
if they've taken a loo break, you know, I don't want the hair side to say, oh, I will not touch up. So mm-hmm. they have to learn each other's job. They don't have to do it, but in case a push comes to shove and it's a requirement, I want the hair person to say, okay, I know what a sponge is. And I will, so I like having, you know, people like that who are not uh, territorial about their work in my team. Post Me Too, you know, everyone's become a bit conscious about how they interact on male-female interaction, especially a person in authority uh, position and like a junior person. We've become a bit more, there's all these workshops and all that before people go into uh, a project now. Uh, but do you think there's really been a change? Yeah, I think there has been not a major change mm. because I think that this t- stuff still happens. Uh, but uh, I think I like, you know, the workshop, the posh workshops mm. that they have, especially like Roy Kapoor films, like that was the first time that I actually uh, went through a posh workshop. And I mean, I've been in the industry for so long, but I didn't know that this is what it means. This is what sexual harassment is because who was there to teach us in our time? You know, um, even school, we just thought sexual harassment was rape. Mm. So, till rape doesn't happen, you're okay, you can't complain. But my eyes opened up when I did this project because I was like, oh my God, I literally like was boiling with rage. I was like, this has happened over and over again and I've seen it happen over and over again. But the lady who took this uh, workshop was so amazing. And I feel that uh, things have changed because... If you have workshops like this, uh, first of all, uh, newcomers uh, kind of get armed with a vocabulary uh, and how to tackle a situation. Mm -hmm. If you don't have the vocabulary, because I didn't, I didn't know how to say no, okay, without compromising my job. So when I did say no, I didn't get paid. When I kind of uh, fobbed it off, I was given a shitty hotel room. But now I feel that I have, of course, with seniority, you can also speak up because now you don't care. You're like, I will not do your project. I'll do another project. But when you're a newcomer, you're like, I want to make my mark with this project. Mm -hmm. Right. So I think the vocabulary, the way you deal, you're taught to deal with it makes a huge difference. And I think that will slowly create the change, maybe not 100%, but even if we reach like 60%, Mm -hmm. 70%, it should be good for us. I actually want to know what exactly posh is. And if somebody does want to kind of um, approach them or, you know, bring up a complaint or even just, uh, like you said, kind of become, um, uh, how, do I, how do I say this? Learn this vocabulary of, yeah. how, well, how does one go so, about this? So, you know, uh, this workshop teaches everything. So when I attended this first workshop, first of all, I think that it should have been for the actors and the crew. Mm-hmm. So I, it should be mandatory for mm-hmm. everyone to attend, number one. Number two, the lady who took it, I think her name was Asiya. She was amazing because first of all, she broke broke down to us what constitutes sexual harassment. So it could be verbal. Okay. Then by that uh, uh, definition, I have been sexually harassed. I mean, like a million times. I'm talking about set. Okay. Uh, You know, talking about your body. Okay. Uh, It could be also that you're witnessing something. And you're not saying something about it, so uh, you are playing a role in that. So as a as a as a you know a passive watcher, okay, as audience, you are also part of that thing. So I didn't realize that okay, that is also part of it. Mm-hmm. Then of course uh, direct advances, uh, you know, texting, sexting, pictures, pa- all that constitutes and a lot more constitutes mm-hmm. uh, sexual harassment. Then. What do you do about it? Because uh, everyone's scared about their job. And actually, you can also jeopardize the, the project that you're doing. So yeah, as far as Posh is concerned, yeah, then they teach you how to, uh, you know, say no. Yeah. But also, where, who you can go to. So they, they tell you the people, these are the people that you can go to. And this is the action that's going to be taken. And it does not have to be, your name will, might not have to be dragged into it unless you don't want it or you want it. It depends on you. And... Uh, Yeah, just come to us. And I feel that a production house that says, come to us, uh, it makes everyone very wary and uh, maybe, you know, think twice before saying anything. Because before that, people would just talk shit. Like, I've been called rubbish. I don't even want to say the thing. What do you think producers can do? These workshops are fantastic. Mm -hmm. I think uh, it it, uh, makes it very clear. 
for everyone and everyone has the same set of rules then it's not like oh i can say this about your chest and your butt okay and uh, i can get away with it because this is not sexual harassment it is so if everyone knows that this is it no one will talk like this hmm. right so uh, the workshops are very important is there another thing to me which yes. i found hilarious which was um, uh, just because you earn money doesn't mean you earn sex but that is how uh, usually unfortunately like yeah. some <laughs> guys would think or maybe even women uh, that it comes with the territory what is an ideal set for you like i think an ideal set would uh, consist of first of all a director who works with me and who doesn't think of me as a separate department from lighting and ad's and mm. direction right um secondly i have to be have a very compassionate producer okay i like i like to work with humans i am not working with you as your designation as ep or producer or so and so i am working with you as a human being who is a producer right now and then uh, of course the actors that i'm working with should be easy i should be able to have fun with them i understand that they need their space to you know uh, do their lines and everything but also to make me feel comfortable you know to make my team feel i will make myself feel comfortable but i have to make they have to make my team feel comfortable enough that if they see that there's something wrong in front of the camera they know that you're not going to brush them off mm. right and food <laughs> food is so important yeah, is on a, a set trend. for me yeah. i'm like the first thing i do is are they giving me healthy food an ideal set for me is a producer walking on to set and telling the director i want the cut the break right now because my my crew is hungry when i hear that i feel like there's someone to take care of me yeah. what do you wish was different so many things were yeah <laughs> and like you know like really silly things yeah. like really silly things like i think the most uh, glaring thing for me which really hurts and pinches me is when crew eat separately from yeah, the actors oh my god i i feel shitty about that because i don't want my team to eat in a separate mm-hmm. uh, tent right yeah. i want to eat with them why am i getting better food than them they work harder than me right so when i uh, when i hear about an arm is sitting and eating with the crew my heart just melts and i'm like I can't wait to work with you. I will give you my two hundred percent. These are the things that make me like if you make me work eighteen hours. Also, I'll work. Don't even pay me overtime. But this is just an amazing work culture. So that I wish that mm. the most basic thing. Then of course budgets. Okay, I wish that uh, they understood that I'm asking what I feel I deserve. But when you start the conversation of the project by saying, "Acha ha," but you know what, budget nahi hai. then you know that just like dampens my spirit then i'm like why am i i'm giving you this you want the same quality you want the same energy mm. you want an amazing uh, you know team but you want to pay me half why right that culture of let's pay the artists and you know have the team not get what they want right that yeah. uh, is kind of i'm still not able to i have to sort of navigate that and of course the kindness which i always talk about i'm like i wish that people were more compassionate and i really mean it from the bottom of my heart because you know i i i i can tell when you work compassionately you are able like you said the functionality of the team yeah. is way more yeah so it could be a small thing like the director coming and sitting with the crew and you know like how are you how are you doing are you okay you know that makes a huge difference how do people just keep up to date and like you yeah. know go with go with the times and technology so when i started off i remember people doing uh, pancake makeup so we would you know rub our brush over that yeah. pancake with water and keep we didn't have like hd powder yeah. or uh, you know fancy foundations and all it was just that one crayola and tv paint stick that we used yeah. and it was heavy because yeah. the cameras were not hd and then this first project that i did the the film that i did uh i was told it's uh, HD and I was like, what is HD? Mm. You know, and the director just told me something. He says everything is going to be caught on camera, every little pore. Mm. And I was like, okay, I cannot use this because that foundation will show like it is foundation sitting. Mm. So I I had to do my research because I didn't go to any institute or or have any formal learning, right? So uh, then I went into the shops and I said I picked up product products which said HD, HD, <laughs> HD. Okay, I made my little kit with that. 
and then uh, when i was on set and using those foundations of course it is you know very uh, the 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 formula is different it's more natural it's not like foundation that will spoil your skin anymore because even like the foundation that we use now it has so many acids and you know uh, serums yeah, and all that it's it actually like helps it is yeah, it is actually yeah. like skin care then i had to learn how to prep the skin because if your skin is not prepped well and i've learned these through the mistakes that i've seen on camera so mm. when i started learn, doing hd makeup i would quickly go dab the artist and then come back behind the camera and it's looking gray so that takes longer to set and to melt into the mm. face than your normal pancake which just dries up quickly so you know these are things that i think help me understand the products better because i learned it first hand it was not taught to me so i understood it instinctively mm. you know so uh, yeah there's there's a huge change a little bit of you know an eyelash off here or there or a gap it picks it up like this so you have to be on the ball you've got to be really good not just in the vanity van while doing your makeup but also very very uh, active behind the camera in you know in front of the monitor so sometimes we get a monitor sometimes we don't and most <laughs> of the time we don't and we are expected that uh, we can see on that little shogun which is like some 3 inches by 6 inches that hey you can see if the hair is coming across the actor's face <laughs> or her kajal is smudged you know so yeah it's a bit of a tricky situation how does one keep expanding their skill set yes yeah, so like you know that i really didn't have any formal training right so um i was willing and i was uh, you know fortunately able to spend time and a lot of effort uh in uh, going on set uh, well not a movie set as such but assisting one of the mm-hmm. top makeup artists like some 18 years back i just cold called him and i said that you know i just want to come and work with you and i just wanted to just test waters to see is this what i want to do and uh it was just his little bit of encouragement and working with him in his team for a few projects that gave me the understanding that you know um i can do this without any training because i anyway like i said i was a painter but for somebody now to enter the industry okay uh who also needs to make money uh, is not easy without any formal training now if you don't have any technical training that background you'll have to give yourself at least a year and really go with somebody who is willing to teach you first of all choose your mentor well mm-hmm. right be ready to work hard okay because there is no learning like uh, learning on set okay that is the best because you learn everything together mm. for me it was always like hey does this work does this work okay it works great okay so this comes into my kit mm. and maybe this is okay this i made this mistake i don't want to do this ever again aisha you fucked up really badly okay so this is then i make a little note in my head that this is never going to happen and i have to tell these to my team also how would you keep up to date and keep investing in yourself or your kit what's a good kit for somebody to start out with so i think that uh, to invest in yourself like i said time and effort besides that you also need to know what's happening in the industry so i follow a lot of makeup artists i see what they are doing i see how can i be different from them mm-hmm. because everyone is very very talented in this industry so uh, besides the you know technical uh, uh, training that you can get mm-hmm. i feel that as far as a kit is concerned i don't believe in having a very big kit zoya uh, you won't believe it but for the last 15 years I have had you know how many bottles of foundation I have not even bottles like sticks of foundation I work with three sticks of foundation and one brand my kit is very very simple basic I have like four eye shadow palettes so I would always suggest don't spend too much makeup on the products but teach yourself how to use those three things really well because that is enough for you I think that people feel that the more products you have you'll be able to do a better job Yeah. You know I've seen that lately the the crop of makeup artists who are coming they've not done any projects they've not earned much money but they've always they they bought so much because if you go on to Instagram now Sephora is available and Nike and everything everything is available at the drop of a hat so any new trend that you see so how I up 
keep up to date is of course I'll watch a lot of these uh, videos that are international videos mm-hmm. okay I also get to work with like the Miss Worlds and the Miss Universes so I talk to them a lot about you know what they're using and the makeup artists around the world that they worked with uh, I think that's amazing and of course to assist uh, somebody who is uh, you know quite well known and who believes in teaching I think yeah. that's a great investment in itself so pick your mentor wisely and heart saaf kar lo ट <laughs> 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 Aisha would you like to end this episode for us thank you zoya for having me <laughs> and i'm sure that i'm going to love watching myself uh, talk about stuff that i've been wanting to and uh, i think this is going to be the best episode <laughs> that's aisha uh, said for you guys uh, i hope you uh, enjoyed this episode and uh, see you soon